Hi guys, welcome to the first ever live uh, streaming on YouTube. So uh, just uh, a look away from the camera a moment while I talk to a few people. Annette, hello. Uh, Deborah here. Gigi is here. And I know there's a few more that are just hiding in the shadows there. So uh, hopefully they'll come on. So yeah, welcome. My name's Trevor. Um, this is Healing Vibrations. A few people have been asking me to do this, you know, to, to start putting my, my face out there onto various platforms. So I've got a WhatsApp group, uh, which has been proving really popular, and also got uh, a Facebook group. But I'm trying out different platforms, and uh, the reason that I'm looking into YouTube like this is that the quality of the audio uh, that you can deliver is, is far superior to, uh, to WhatsApp and to also uh, Facebook. Um, and I spend a lot of time creating the audio to make it sound just right and using the correct frequencies. And so that's why uh, YouTube is the obvious choice. So uh, welcome. So there's four now, but I'm sure that in a few months' time there'll be a lot more than that. Uh, if anybody's got any questions, uh, please just type them in and, and stick them up there and uh, I'll see what I can do. So this subject of today's video and the meditation uh, that's going to follow or be part of this is about fear. And um, if you haven't got your headphones already, get one, get your headphones and get ready to put them on. Um, it's fear is, is something that is, is within all of us uh, at different levels. And um, it's the one thing that stops us from moving forward, really. And uh, it really, that is the ultimate goal, you know, becoming love and moving away from fear. And so fear manifests in lots of different ways, and we've seen a lot of it in recent ac activity in the world. Uh, it, it turns into, you know, aggression and violence, and it also is, if, if, it's, if fear is not expressed, it becomes depressed. Sorry, if anger is not expressed, it, it, that becomes depression. Um, and it's, if you see it as energy that's moving, um, Tom Campbell is a, is, a, is a physicist, quantum physicist, and uh, he's, he's also... Um, he he spent his life dedicated to consciousness studies, and he, um, if I remember correctly, he he says that fear is like disorganized data, disorganized information, whereas love is organized information. So one has a, a high entropy and one has a low entropy. So therefore, one is more efficient, which is love, and the other obviously is fear. So the analogy is that if you have two different uh, communities that are building things, you would have something like um, that's one that's built on love, then that's a supportive uh, community. So somebody would build something and uh, it would naturally, you know, be supported and people would be helping out and, you know, when it's done, they'd be very proud and, and happy for each other. Whereas if you're in a fear-based society, when anything is created, there's a jealousy uh, people are wanting to tear it down, and um, so yeah, the 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 fear that's within us um, is also mirrored in what's happening in society now. So my background is I've done quite a uh, a lot of um, well, not in comparatively uh, different um, modalities, plant medicines, and uh, I did Reiki quite a few years ago, but I, I never really um, never really I wasn't ready for doing that sort of work then. Um, and since then, I've started to, um, well, I was just gifted uh, an ability to detect uh, and help people with their energy fields. And so that's kind of where I'm going at the moment. And I use sound to uh, carry frequency and carry information through. So when we look at fear, the idea is that that fear represents it presents itself to me as a, a distortion in the energy field. So that uh, which I, I can detect either by moving my hand close to it or just tuning into people's um, energy, really. And so that distortion is, is something that causes resistance. And that resistance is something that over time can affect you physically as well as mentally and, and, and everything else. So, um, so <laughs> the... I use different frequencies and I, and I create music specifically for each um, each condition, each challenge, and uh, it's a very much a, a, a guided, channeled experience, really. Um, for instance, this week, um, this meditation and this subject of this is, is to do 
is connected to a conversation I had with somebody um, yesterday, actually. And uh, we were talking about fear. And, um, and that no matter who you are, it affects you. And some fear can be from your childhood. Some fear can be from um, learned behavior, from uh, your environment. And some fear can be passed through your DNA. And uh, depending on what your beliefs are, also through past life as well. So we've had experience of all those um, conditions. And so, yeah, um, so we talked about fear and how it, how it manifests. So the frequency when using sound healing, the frequency that is um, very effective is um, 396 hertz. So um, that's the, the frequency that I'm using today, 396. But also, um, it's not just the frequencies. It's the intent behind um, behind what you do. So any this goes for any healing. I believe it's the intent behind what you do. So if you're using crystals, if you're using um, I don't know, tower cards, um, if you're using um, hands-on healing, it's it's more to do with the therapist than it is to actually do with the the healing modality. And so that's why I think it's important for therapists to continually um, um, heal themselves. You know, there's a saying, heal, heal ourselves. And, and it's a journey. And for anyone that is wanting to go into healing, uh, it's, it can be a very challenging time because you have to, um, you literally change your life. A lot of people change their life. They give up um, or let go of things that um, no longer resonate with them. And um, you're on a constant changing all the time and through your vibration when you start going really quickly. So, and the things that used to um, um, resonate with you, like drinking or if you like going out and partying, for a lot of people, uh, even eating things like red meat and the whole diet, everything can change where suddenly you are not, um, you are not sort of attracted to them things anymore. And so dealing with fear is something that um, is, is necessary uh, and part of the journey, really, because it's all about processing um, the things that are inside you and dealing with your shadow. And there's various different ways of doing that. Um, but all roads lead to the same place. And um, so, yeah. So I thought I'd be doing a series of videos, uh, a continual different connection. Uh, some will be just myself, s like this. Some will be uh, connecting with people or specialists in their field. Um, and some will be uh, general information and meditation. So today is a little bit about fear and uh, just showing you and, and letting you experience my new um, meditation and be interesting to see what your feedback is as well. So. Before I get on to the actual technicalities of the meditation side of it, um, yeah, is there any questions from the uh, from the group that's here already? Just type them in, I'll see them. Hey, hi Emma, how are you doing? Um, good to good to see you here. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, I think with the way technology has now evolved, and because of the the, the situation of the way everything's happening at the moment, it's really been a useful tool and people have really found the importance of connecting uh, in this media in this way and um, I've been in the media business for 25 30 years really and uh, when I think of what was required then to actually start broadcasting and go live it it's half a room full of equipment so to be able to do it from a laptop a camera and a few little bits and a radio mic is is amazing so um, everybody has their 15 minutes of, uh, of publicity and some people are using it well. Some people are just um, sending lots of information out there. And uh, it's been interesting over the last couple of months to see how many people have, have managed to get in front of a camera and want to voice their opinion and, and uh, some for, for better and some for worse, no doubt. So we're in an information overload at the moment and it's still connecting to the subject of fear. Um, there's so much fear that, that is now available to us, basically, so much information that is based around fear. And, um, you know, if there's nothing in our immediate vicinity or environment that 
scares us, we can quickly switch on a mobile device, uh, tune into something that's happening on the other side of the world and still feel the same feelings, you know, as if we were, I as if we were there. So um, it's, it's very important to pay attention to what you allow into your consciousness because every time you feel a strong emotion, that creates chemicals, neurochemistry, and uh, that affects your, your body. Not to mention the fact that uh, energetically, uh, that really does affect you as well. And um, so, yeah, it's an interesting subject, and I think we'll have some sort of uh, round table discussion about that with some other people and, and get their perspectives as well. So, um, yeah. So, um, a little bit about um, the, the meditation tonight. It lasts for 45 minutes. It's mixed in surrounds, digital surround sound. And um, I'll just, hi Heather, just walked out how to say hello. Uh, and I'm here and interested, good, <laughs> great. Um, yeah, when we listen to music, the, the standard music, it's, it's tuned, like the, the A on a keyboard is tuned to 440 hertz. That means it, it um, vibrates at 440,000 times a second. So what is more natural is when you tune something down to 432 hertz. Uh, it's a more of a, a natural resonance, and there's plenty of scientific studies to s to show that you know people feel better. Of course, there's always the placebo where people can decide whether or not you know if it's something suggested that it will feel better. But um, you can feel it, and I've tried different experiments with people. And I've showed them this m the same piece of music, and I've gone, okay, which one do you prefer? And the one that is four three two, they can feel it in the heart, and um, so I tend to start to tune my uh, or compose my audio now in four three two, um, but I, I shift it around. I, I use different tones and different frequencies depending on on what I feel is, is going to be there. So normally, I sit down with a, a blank sheet of paper and um, not even a subject sometimes, and then just the music just comes through really, and I just write it. And I I. I tune into the frequencies, and if it feels right, sometimes my whole body will start vibrating, so I kind of know I'm on the right thing. So it's a very, uh, um, let's just say, I, I just feel into the music. And what I was saying to someone this week is quite interesting, is that after the music's finished, um, I, I keep it to around about 45 minutes, because I feel that's quite a good, uh, a good length for um, for most people to to get into, but I can extend them or shorten them. But I feel forty five minutes is is at the moment is is a good length. Um, so after I've written the music, I'll sit down and then an idea will come for the actual script, and usually could be you know twenty minutes after I finish the music, and then I'll just write, and then the information will come through, and I'll just type. And then what's interesting is that when I actually record the vocals, I'll put the music in the background. And then I'll uh, I'll just read the script that I've, I've written, and so many times I'll mention something, and there's a sound effect or a piece of music that just fits exactly where that piece should have gone. So it's almost like it's just fitting together. Um, so yeah, and then when people actually listen to them, they're they're feeling. Um, I think I believe they're feeling the frequency that's coming through. Um, so don't fully understand it yet. There's no scientific proof to this, but I know over the hundreds and hundreds of people that have experienced the meditations, they're having some very profound effects and a s at the very least a sense of feeling light, uh, lightness. Some people have almost psychedelic experiences. So um, yeah, very interesting. Uh, and I'm very excited to be able to um, be, be part of this great thing that's happening at the moment where people are waking up and people are actually turning more to um, spirituality or as I like to call it the you know um, external information um, that, that's gathering so yeah um, any questions hi Eve Eve just popped in there <laughs> so yeah so uh, a few of these people most of them actually are in the group that listen to the meditations and they've been there uh, or in my patron group which is, has been great and um and I'm sure that uh, whoever's going to listen to this over the years that it's going to be up there um, 
we'll maybe get in contact as well. So yeah, if you've got any questions, um, just throw them out there. Saves me talking to myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I've kind of traveled a lot over the last few years with, with my work. Um, you know, more recently went to China, which was an amazing experience. Um, and been to South Africa, been to all the continents really, and it's only happened due to getting involved in this kind of work. And sort of recently with the way it's, um, the lockdowns happened, um, it's, it's allowed me to, actually allow me to focus more on just um, developing my, my abilities to produce music. So it's been really useful. But I know for a lot of people that time of having by yourself has been really challenging because usually they're stimulated to do work they're stimulated by you know stress and families and they're always busy so they've not really had time to sit and connect with themselves so um i personally have not felt any stress or any concern over what's happening because um i've not gone into the fear response and um whereas a lot of people have and uh, it's it's quite been hard, quite hard to see people sort of um, go into that place and um, and suffer quite easily. You, you realise that you know you think everybody's on an even keel, and then when something like this happens, they quickly move into uh, fight or flight. Um, okay, now I thought it was a question, but it's not. <laughs> so yeah, um, so this this. Um, these series, I'm going to try and do one of these at least once a week and explain some of my experiences and, and talk through people's own experiences of uh, spiritual awakening because there is a lot happening at the moment. So many people are waking up, but there is so much information out there that is completely um, out of people's comfort zone that they, they're finding it hard to relate to. And it is a weird and wonderful um, world that we get into when you start developing these abilities to sense uh, perhaps other realities, other sensations. And for some people, it can be quite disconcerting. Um, but for other people, they, they get addicted to knowing information. And uh, it's all about integration. Um, otherwise, it just becomes something that the ego is chasing. So the, the integration of information and to allow it to be useful to what you're doing and to your life. And I, d I determine sort of usefulness as, is it making you become a happier, a more loving person? Is it helping things to run smoothly? And if it's not, then it's just like any belief system. Um, so, but that's another video. <laughs> um, so we've got a question here. Why does the meditation feel more powerful when done in a group? All at the same time, like tonight's meditation, even though we're all working with our own personal energy fields. Good question. Cheers, Eve. <sighs> now, I believe, now I don't read books. This is just from what I gather myself. I think I've read three books since I left school. So the information I get, I'd rather explain it from my perspective than somebody else's perspective, which I know, I don't even know if it's true or not. So I would advise that to everyone as well you know, um, ex experience things yourself and then come to your own conclusions. But uh, I've noticed when working with large groups up to, you know, 100, 120 people or working with small groups or working with individuals, there is a difference in the energy. Um, and I believe that because of the thing called coherence, where the, the energy starts resonating with similar things. So, for instance, if you've got a sound bowl and it's a certain frequency and you hit that sound bowl, it'll vibrate and that'll also vibrate another sound bowl of the same frequency. So it's all about frequencies resonating with each other. And when you've got a large group, there's a, m there's a moment when you can feel it shift, where everybody is in synch synchronization, really. They're all in this round about the same frequency. And when that happens, it's, it's amazing. And that's what you feel, that group energy. And uh, that's where you can really, you know, the sum of the parts, you know, is really makes a difference. And uh, yeah, I, I do enjoy group meditations. And um, so, yeah, In interestingly enough, when I started doing these meditations uh, a couple of years ago, really, I was just practicing and w I could feel energy coming in with uh, when I work with people, I could feel energy coming in. But then 
I did a meditation. I just thought, I'll see what this sounds like. And then at certain points, the energy would come in. I could feel it. So I'm thinking, so there's energy that's almost embedded with the meditation. And that is something I've noticed now. There's a m when, So you've got your music, you've got your um, narration, you know, you're, you're, you're talking. And then there's something else, another frequency that is somehow embedded. Um, I don't fully understand how, but um, and we can jump to conclusions, but I know there's a third element that's in there. And I've also found that when people do a group meditation with a specific meditation, it's like the energy has been encoded into that meditation so that when they uh, use that meditation at a future event or a future time, there's a still a, a large imprint of that energy in. So, um, you know, again, science maybe in the future will prove this. I'm just going from what people's feedback are. And I'm sure there's a few people out there who've, who've also experienced the same thing. Um, but it's, um, it's very interesting. And so that I think when doing a group meditation like tonight, um, it changes the, um, the information uh, in the actual um, meditation. And so it becomes a lot more focused, a lot more, uh, there's, there's intention, intention goes into it from everyone in the group. So I hope that helps to answer your question. What does it mean, uh, feel to download codes? What does it mean to feel or download codes? Okay, so good question, Emma. Um, when, if you ever do things like plant medicine, uh, such as ayahuasca, or you do psychedelics, or um, you open yourself up using various meditation or different techniques, there's uh, an experience of information coming into your system. Now. A lot of people see call this downloads, downloads of information. They're downloading information. Um, and when you are in a situation where you are in a dramatically altered state, that sense of download is profound. It feels like you're under a waterfall of information that's just flooding into your system. And it's so much information. Um, and your body can react in various different ways, but it's almost like you're, you're getting updated. So it's codes. We see it as codes of information. And um, when I've been in s um, dramatically altered states, I've seen people as digital, digital systems. And when uh, I, I work as a healing channel, it's like the, the information is taken out and put back in again. It's like code is in inserted and taken out or realigned. So corrupt code, so to speak, things that are out of alignment is removed and then new fresh code is coming in, or upgrades, which are chunks of information uh, that come into a, a system. Now, according to quantum physics, this is a digital reality. This is a simulation, and uh, it makes sense. And people who have experienced these profound shifts in consciousness, they, um, they, they see it. They see everything as vibrating particles of information. So the... <laughs> The interesting thing uh, that I've been thinking about recently is that, you know, in ancient times, you know, in Egypt and the Mayans, they never really talked about codes. You don't see, you know, diagrams on the wall with light language and codes embedded. There is a, the uh, flower of life uh, in Egypt, which I was lucky enough to see last year, and that is quite significant. But apart from that, N no, no real talk about codes. And I think it's that the system, you know, God, the system, whatever you want to call it, I think it adapts to the metaphors that we can understand. So because we understand what digital system is and what simulation is, then I think it's quite easily, it's easy for us to understand the concept of downloads and uploads and, and, and to experience that. Um, so yeah, it's, um, so I noticed that there's there's packets of information that come in to some. It's quite interesting. It's very similar to computers. So sometimes I've worked with people and um, in in s ayahuasca ceremonies, and um, they'll say, "Okay, there's a download coming." And so the information would come in to the individual, and then there would be a process of checking the code. Uh, that's the best way I could say it. 
I th so the individual is sitting there, and uh, the particular one I'm thinking about is uh, the, sh the shaman that I work with called Rob. He's, he's brilliant. And um, a couple of times this has happened where there's been information to him, and then he'll say, now what? Because nothing's happened, all this information's gone in, and then uh, they'll be saying, oh, they're checking the code. So it's like a process of either guides or somebody's coming to check the code, and as they check the code, okay, it's okay, and activation. As soon as that happens, you say activation, this code just, or this group of, of programs or something inside suddenly activates, and uh, it's incredible. And I've also noticed that things can download and sit in your, and let's say system, let's call it your system, your, your information system as, as a body and your energetic system. It can sit there for months or years, and then at a specific time, it's activated. Or there's uh, another piece of information from another location, another person that come together, and that starts it as well. So I've seen that happen a few times. Um, so yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Um, how it how it works. So perhaps codes are are fundamental to reality. Maybe are fundamental, and maybe it's just that our ability to perceive that that level of consciousness and information is interchange is is actually happening, and that's why it's it's happening now. Or maybe in five hundred years, a thousand years, we might um, interpret that information as something else. Um, who knows? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Any more questions? Please let me know. Um, so, yeah, it's you know, on this journey, I've had some extraordinary experiences. Um, but my greatest teacher has, has been um, Tom Campbell. So, yeah, Tom Campbell's helped to create a fundamental uh, understanding of how reality works, why we're here, and um, of all the different types of modalities I've tried or been experienced to. There's always I always bring myself back to understanding it from his perspective and his theory and a lot of the information, if not all, I keep going back to it thinking, oh yeah, I understand that now. I understand that because I experience it. So yeah, if you get the opportunity, look up Tom Campbell, My Big Toe. Um, that's really good work. And then there's um, there's lots of different ways people open up to spirituality. You know, one is... Um, through plant medicines, it's very popular now, ayahuasca, um, mushrooms, psychedelics. Other people just have spontaneous awakening, um, and other people find it through meditation as well. There's, there's, there's so many different ways into to this now, but what is important is that I think what's, what's coming to the surface now is that so many people that you wouldn't expect to normally be interested in this um, let's say esoteric type of work or self-development at this level are opening up to it now. They're suddenly thinking there's something there's something interested in useful. There's something useful in in learning how to process fear, how to um, become a more caring person, and you know how to move away from you know this society of technology um, and you know, sort of materialism which is obviously, as we can see, is not working as it should do um, for everyone, um, which is why a lot of what's happened has happened. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a need for people to... Um, there's always a positive side of everything, and I think there's a need where people can actually spend time and take a few breaths and, and realise what they're doing with their life, really. Um, you missed Eve's question. What do you think is actually happening when you are healing someone? Good question. I need a producer, that's what I need. <laughs> um, what do I feel is happening? Um, when I, well, for me personally, I feel that there is, there is energy that comes through. Um, and I try and stay completely um, out of the equation when I'm working with someone. I'll, st I'll be present, I'll be in it. It's almost like being in the center of a seesaw. I just stay in the center. And it's took a while to be able to do that because you try and always go, oh, what if this is not working? What if this is happening? And Oh, she's, I noticed she walked in with a bit of a limp. Oh, then it must be something to do with a hip. And you just got to stay out of it. And if you get information, it comes through and you give the information. Um, sometimes you'll get random bits of information that come through that you think, uh, should I say that? But then you just got to trust. 
and just say it and it could be something really profound for the person that you're working with. So I feel that what happens is that as you open up as a channel, as you raise your vibration as a, as a healing channel, you open yourself up and information comes through you into um, the person that you're working with. Because one of the questions was, well, if there's energy all around us and there's guides and there's, you know, higher developed beings, then why do they need us? Why can't they just work with someone directly? And they can, but my feeling, uh, you know, correct me, but I'm feeling is that we act as a conduit. We act as a, as a go-between, as a bridge, because of the vibration that, that's up there is so high that we act as a, as a bridge between that. So the more um, we can clean our channels up and be, be just as high as we possibly can be, and the less fear we have in our system, then the clearer the channel we can be. So energy comes through, and the the vibration, um, um, well, I feel the vibration in my hand, but I feel that that's not necessary. It's just a feedback mechanism to show me that there's energy coming through. Um, some people have different things. There's a guy called Charlie Goldsborough, Goldsworth, um, and he's an Australian um, um, healer, and he's, he's amazing. Just a lov He looks a lovely guy. Um, and he, he literally sits like this and he, his eyes flutter. That's it. And some extraordinary, um, extraordinary healings. And uh, I think he's on HBO uh, or Amazon. He's definitely on Amazon. Uh, the series is called The Healer. So if you get a chance to watch that. And he does some live sessions as well. But uh, really, really cool. And then you get some people come in and they've got, you know, a whole range of tools and potions and and they get the same or not the same result but a similar result you know um so we the energy uses whatever vehicle it can to the best of its ability and our belief systems as channels also has a massive effect on on what energy and frequency that we're carrying through if there's a part of us that throws well it's not impo that's impossible it's never going to work then it's not going to work because that's resistance. So it's almost like putting a, a plug there that stops the water flowing. Um, so uh, good healing channels are constantly working on themselves to improve and to make sure that they don't go into ego and they process their own own things as well. So good question, that. Thanks. <laughs> um, but I've seen some extraordinary things um you know um extraordinary healings and extraordinary experiences that are were previously out of my belief systems which when one thing happens like that everything opens up and uh and when everything opens up then magic happens it really is and so i still stay open-minded skeptic if somebody goes oh well i've got a dragon here and i can see it uh, you know a uh, unicorn. Well, I haven't seen that, but that might be true. I don't know. <laughs> you know, um, that wasn't Eve's question, though. That was me. Hers was before Elizabeth. Okay, can you uh, let's have a look? Yeah, Eve, can you just throw the? Oh, I can go back up. Hang on. Oh, it's all. Um, sounds super interesting. Take rather the guy. Okay. Um, where's Eve? Why does a meditation put no, got that one. You have to retype it again. <laughs> okay. Uh Elizabeth. I'm struggling with my role. Uh any tips on how to refine skills to become more focused role? People often give me feedback that they like how multifaceted my healings are, but I'd rather be ref in refinement. Um, yeah, I suppose there's different ways of, of doing healing with different people. And um, in a way, it's nice to have a few um, tools in your toolkit that you can jump to. But it's also nice to be special specialized in things as well. And I suppose it depends on, on what you feel is um, more useful for you. You know, what would you like to work with? Would you like to, if you'd like to be more refined, then, you know, you can communicate. It's a two-way system and say, well, look, actually, I want to be, you know, I want to, for instance, if you're working with crystals, I want to work specifically with crystals and I want to, you know, show me how I can be more effective by using them. 
You know, is it something I need to study? Is it something I need to change in me physically? Or do I need to change my diet? So I think being disciplined to one specific um, modality is useful. Um, yeah, m I suppose mine is, mine I do sound healing, but I also do energy healing. And then, uh, so the, the, the thing that underlies them both, that ties them together is frequency. So then I think, well, I work with frequency. So perhaps the different um, things that you're using to, to work with healing people might have an underlying um, um, connection, which m m I hope that uh, that helps to to help you define what you really want to do. Um, but we do have free will, so we can choose to, to develop that aspect um, of ourselves, really. Yeah. So, well... I think we'll we'll start with it. We'll do the meditation. Uh, what it is? It's a 45-minute meditation. Please use headphones, and um, yeah, if you can relax in a, in a nice, comfortable position, that'd be great. And turn off any notifications you're going to get from from WhatsApp and things. Um, the tips are to try and relax your body as much as you possibly can, and keep scanning your body to see if you automatically go tense again. The the frequency is 396, and there's a carrying frequency that, that is throughout the track, and um, it helps to tune into that as well. Um, but you also may find that you just drift off and have vibrations and do all sorts of things. Uh, so, yeah, um, thanks. I have a common thread in helping people surrender through relaxation. Awesome. Um, yeah, there's loads of different subjects, and you know, hopefully, we'll we'll cover, we'll go into these in more detail. And again, tonight's kind of general, uh, but there'll be more specific subjects that that we'll cover. So, if you're ready, um, we're going to do this brand new um, meditation on fear, uh, fear release, and um, I hope you enjoy it. And please uh, leave your comments and subscribe. Thank you. Welcome to this meditation entitled Releasing Fear. To take advantage of the 3D stereo processing techniques used in this production, I recommend that you listen to this material with headphones and try to ensure that you will not be disturbed. Please orientate your headphones so that this is in your left ear and this is in your right. This meditation has been produced with a prominent frequency of 396 Hertz and where the natural note of A is retuned to 432 Hertz, which is said to be the natural frequency of nature and the universe. It is my belief that feelings such as guilt, sadness, anxiety and fear, as well as positive feelings such as joy, love and happiness exist in their own particular frequency band of vibration. 396 Hertz is one of the fundamental frequencies used in sound healing to help transmute and release anxiety and fear. Whilst listening to this production, focus your attention on the main dominating tone. This is present throughout and try to imagine pulling that sound into the center of your heart. So now, make yourself comfortable and begin by focusing on your breathing. Deep, long breaths in and out until you feel like your body is becoming heavy and relaxed. As you hear the sound of my voice and you breathe in and out, be aware of your thoughts. And as you begin to relax your neck and your shoulders, 
and gently relax the muscles in your face, in your jaw. Your thoughts begin to slow down and your breathing becomes slower. As you hear the sound of my voice, sensations begin to guide you into a sacred time of connection with yourself. This is your time to just be in this space, in this moment. When we think about fear, we realize that it exists in most people in different degrees. Some of this fear is a result of our culture, our environment, learning experiences from our childhood, and even carried through generations embedded in our DNA. This free-floating fear is wanting to express itself in whatever form it can through anger, frustration, depression and many other feelings that you would not immediately associate with fear itself. So as you relax deeper into a state of potentiality where you can safely be aware of the presence of fear from a different perspective. Fear is not real because you are energy that is eternal. If feelings are transient, temporary, a passing collection of thoughts, feelings and emotions that exist to teach you to bring to your awareness an opportunity to become more aware of yourself. to shine the light into the darkness. Opposites exist in all levels of nature fear of not being loved is really trying to teach yourself to love yourself and to understand that you are good enough and unique exactly as you are.
In each of us, there is a part called the ego. The ego is defined as awareness in the service of fear. And without fear, the ego cannot exist. As you relax deeper, breathe into this positive space, the energy that surrounds you now enables you to feel safe, to just let go, to sink into the experience. All fear is an illusion. Love is the most powerful energy that exists. Open your heart and ask for the frequency of love to flow into your heart space. You are right where you are supposed to be, at this point, at this place, to realize and have the opportunity to be aware and to choose a different way to react, to surrender to the understanding that whatever happens, you have the resources within you to accept and overcome any obstacle and to enjoy the process of recognizing fear for what it is. processes are now taking place on many levels that will start to release any energy of fear safely and calmly from your body, from your mind, in your subtle energy bodies, from past timelines and even future timelines, as intent and love are what created life itself.
there are 30 trillion cells in your body, all of which are connected and are working together in perfect harmony, vibrating at a quantum level and filled with information. As this sound frequency travels in through your ears, into your head, your neck, your shoulders, it vibrates through your body at a cellular level. Every cell resonates with this healing frequency. All you have to do is give permission for yourself to heal at this level. with a deep communication to all parts of yourself that you can change anything through your intention. You can heal anything when you let go and connect to this level of energy. You deserve to live without fear and to find new ways to express love to yourself and to those around you at every opportunity. In a few moments time I will count from 5 down to 1 and as I count from 5 down to 1, on the count of 1, give yourself permission for any of your fears to be gently released and to do so in whatever way is most beneficial for your present state of growth and awareness. Breathe slow and deep. Five, four, three, two, and one. Go deeper into your heart, release, and let go.
I forgive myself for feelings of guilt, anger, sadness, and understand that these were lessons to guide me to this place, to this moment, for this process. Now, what would it feel like for every cell in your body to start to glow with white, bright light? Like millions of tiny lights all merging into one bright white light that surrounds your body and extends out into the room where you are. out into the street, becoming so bright it extends out into your town and your city. How bright would that have to be? This is who you really are. The illusion of self is just that, an illusion. There is nothing to fear. The very essence of your being is pure vibration of the highest, purest frequency of love. Go inside now and express to yourself how grateful you are for being you. What an amazing opportunity you have to experience this life through your body, through your thoughts and feelings, your senses to hear, to see, to touch and taste and to express yourself to others and to all the people in your life that you care about.
everything has a grand design and a divine timing and you are right where you are supposed to be so now where are you going to be in six weeks in six months or even six years As you continually raise your vibration, you continually transmute the fear, leaving more space for gratitude and self-appreciation as you welcome in the potentiality of possibility, vibrating at a new level of consciousness. Life is happening for you, not to you. As your cells shine brightly with this pure white light, you may begin to feel tingles, vibrations, even sometimes tears gently moving down your face. This is your body just letting go. Your heart is sending out pure frequency as you start to align with your true self the energy starts to flow from the top of your head down to the tips of your toes without fear, without resistance, just be.
everything that exists is information. And as we welcome new codes of this information, responding to your intention, the light finds its way into every part of you and at every level. It is at this time we ask your guides and all the higher frequency beings that come into this space to help you in whatever way necessary for the benefit of your own growth and awareness in this moment, in this now. the days and the weeks and the months that follow and every subsequent time you enter into this space as the fear gently moves away out of your energy system out of your body it leaves a space that can be filled 
with positive feelings such as love, excitement, creativity, joy, and the ability to choose how to feel and how to react based on all those positive feelings and sensations. As you open your heart even more now and just float in this awareness. And each time you revisit this space, this process becomes easier and easier. Sometimes just the thought of how you're feeling right now 
is enough to bring you back into this pleasant state of healing and awareness. few moments time I will count from five down to one and as I do we ask that all parts of you that retain the highest vibration come back into this space into this here and now bringing into your awareness any and all information and feelings that are most beneficial for your current states of development and growth To your full awareness. Two, aware of your physical body. And one, feeling brighter, lighter, and calm. Thank you for listening to this meditation. My name is Trevor Hamlet. If you'd like to experience more of my work or share comments and suggestions, then please visit my website, healingvibrations.co.uk.